creators. Humor has been a staple of advertising for many years. Ads have a simple goal in mind, get people to buy their products. But how they get them to open their wallets is a complex strategy driven by a keen understanding of how people function on a socially psychological level. More recently, there's been a rise in humorous ads for slightly embarrassing products, like the Squatty Potty, Poopery, and the Hello Flow period products. But are they embarrassing? How do you know? Are these ads changing how we think about normal bodily functions? Heuristics are mental shortcuts that we make in order to save brain energy. It's evolutionarily advantageous to save as much energy as possible because out in the wild you could die just because you overestimated how much energy you had to contribute towards a particular thing. So, in order to conserve energy, we have evolved to be cognitive misers, jumping to conclusions pretty much habitually, and it takes a lot of learning before we stop making assumptions for a given idea. In the case of advertisements, they depend heavily on our use of heuristics to make quick, gut-driven decisions not particularly driven by any kind of deep thinking. Ads are notoriously loud, brightly colored, and fast-paced. There's no time to stop and think. But by the time you've finished watching the ad, whether you like it or not, you've already memorized aspects of their products such as their logo, jingle, and some familiar association with the ad. Humor is a very direct way to create a positive association with an idea. It feels really good, and our brains remember that instantly. So, when you see an ad and laugh, all sorts of pleasing chemicals get released which end up relaxing your skepticism of this new brand that's screaming at you, and you're already likely to go out and buy that product simply because your body will remember how it made you feel when you watched the ad. Humor itself has just created a new heuristic in your brain. Product equals funny equals good. It's that simple. But let's talk about these unmentionable products for a moment. A 1950s housewife would probably have fainted if you showed her these ads. But why? It has something to do with social norms. Social norms are agreed upon rules in a given group of people for what is okay and what is not okay to do and to believe. These norms are constantly evolving. Especially in a melting pot like the United States, people's ideas of what's normal is never consistent for very long because of all the various influences we have from the media and from the variety of people we interact with. Even if we live rather reclusive lives, we can't escape how impactful these social norms are in an ever-changing environment. Just take a look at the variety of norms that has arisen regarding mask wearing. Or not wearing. Everybody has a body. Everybody poops. Everybody has a period. Oh wait, not everybody, but a lot of people. So it shouldn't really be that embarrassing to talk about it, right? Unfortunately, for a long time, people's bodily functions were not something anyone admitted to. Social norms stemming from Victorian era Puritan values dictated that we basically had to pretend like we don't poop, don't have sex, don't eat our boogers, mmm, yeah. But those norms have changed. And more recently, ads like these are pushing these conversations to the forefront in order to sell their products. But the side effect is that people in general are going to be more okay with discussing bodily functions. They did it, and it was funny, so I guess it's okay now, you think to yourself. And so you're going to carry that social norm to the people in your life and influence what they think of as socially acceptable. Speaking of social acceptance, this ad introduces a period starter kid through the story of a girl who just wants to fit in with her friends. Nothing. So, I faked it. Hmm. Looks like Florida. Yeah, I got it. It's so red. Cherry Slush Club. Blood Sisters. They bought it. Hey, Katie. She Just does this? so by pretending like she started her period, even though she doesn't seem to have a basic idea of what a period looks like. Instead of expecting compliance, which is publicly acting one way while secretly believing in something else, her mom throws her a first moon party. A first moon party. What the hell is a first moon party? Oh. By inviting all the girls' friends and family and even a few strangers, the mom is increasing the teenager's cognitive dissonance, or feelings of her beliefs and actions being at odds with one another, according to researcher Leon Festinger and pals, anyway. What are you doing? You're missing the magician. You need to stop this. No one is having fun. What are you talking about? This party is a hit. Your grandpa is bobbing for ovaries like a champ. I faked it! In this way, the mom pushes her daughter over the edge and the girl confesses to her misdemeanor. 
the mother has successfully changed her daughter's behavior through conversion, where she will now change her beliefs about what is okay to do even in private, not just for show when mom's around. Researcher Shelley Chaikin, based on her 1980 essay, would say that the teenager went from heuristic thinking to systematic thinking, carefully weighing pros and cons instead of making quick judgments. Why then do we prefer to do things that other people do? Well, in evolutionary terms, it's just basic survival. We learn best practices from each other so we don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, because that's extremely energetically taxing. And if we eat the wrong berry, well, we might not have such a good time. Social conformity is where people do what others do in order to minimize standing out. A researcher named Muzaffar Sharif conducted an experiment in 1935 that showed that people are quick to conform to social norms around them when they're unsure of their situation. Maybe you've seen this experiment on social media. It pretty much illustrates the same point. So, based on the idea that we are unsure of ourselves and eventually start to prefer the group that we have gotten used to conforming to, social psychologists have coined the term in-group bias to refer to a person's preference for others like themselves. When people appear too different from what you see as your group identity, the rules and actions that dictate the definition for what the group is and is not, then you start to categorize them as the out-group, something our not yet menstruating teen really didn't want to experience among her friends. Now, ads like the ones we're looking at today use these ideas to their advantage. When you're seeing a new unfamiliar ad for a new unfamiliar product, you're not sure how to act. They normalize the experience by appearing friendly and funny and repeating their message such that eventually you begin to think of it as a norm. These companies want you to align with their product and their brand. They want you to become part of their in-group. One way they do this in these particular ads is by breaking the fourth wall, where the actors are addressing the viewer directly. This directness literally stares you in the face and says, Hey, you there. Let's be friends. You know you want to. And because they're talking about bathroom things, they soften it with humor and gently wiggle their way into your heart. There you are.